Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Uh, so I, uh, put some water around the as well. Um, welcome. Uh, welcome. 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 Welcome.
think um, uh, I got her a PA job. Oh, yes. And um, her first day, uh, her job was, it was like a hundred and... Uh, it was like It was like a hundred and ten uh, degrees Fahrenheit <laughs> outside with the desert. And her job was to turn the air conditioners, which are on way on one side of the studio, and the other one was way on the other side of the studio. So we had air conditioning between takes. So she was running back and forth between those, and she heard, um, Could we have Mr. Durham on the set, please? Uh, like make fan sure fan. he has a part and, uh, you know, somebody to cool him off as he comes <laughs> in. And she looked at me and said, I got the wrong got the job. Wrong fucking job. <laughs> Uh, but did you did you have to do anything like that before you started to pick up more regular acting work? Did you have any? That's a good question. I started out when I was young, when I was 16. Um, I did summer stock, and I did a lot of technical stuff, building sets and that kind of thing. Then uh, I went to a, a really serious uh, place in New York called Circle Rep, and um, I did a lot of stage managing and, and that kind of thing, and, and uh, you know, eventually I started getting parts, and kabam, I got lucky. But no turning on or off air conditioners. <laughs> Actually, oh, I did worse. I did worse. <laughs> I strung lights in, uh, in, you know, in, in ceilings where it was rat shit, you know, <laughs> and uh, so, no, 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 no. I, it, uh, yeah. You've done your hard jobs. I did the hard jobs. I, I think, was your first movie, What's Over the Cookies Nest? Do I have that right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. That, that was your first. What a horrible, <laughs> oh, no, I know, it sucked at the beginning, but you know, Chucky made up for it. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of, like, let's, let's go to the, the Chucky thing. Like, obviously, that in the 80s, all that sort of drama of film was just beginning and stuff. When you took that role, did you think it was going to be as many films and as many series down the line? Of course or? not. <laughs> you know, it's like, I didn't think it was going to be, I thought, you know, do okay, be interesting, but I didn't think it was going to be as successful the first movie as it was. I, I think everybody was surprised by that. But it did, it just, it hit that sort of early sort of 80s, like, real resurgence of monsters and horror, and became like an iconic, you know, face in, in the whole well, horror film. There was a movie called The Incredible Dr. Five, which, um, which had all these elaborate, ridiculously elaborate murders in it. And I think that was the first, that, that was the beginning of the genre um, that Chucky came out of. Just before that, everything was still very serious um, hard, where like, this is really happening nobody ever believed so. Yeah, I mean, really, it did, it, it came at time, obviously the 70s had that real indie boom, but horror wasn't really that prominent, and like you say, it was just sort of, something hit around the time of Halloween, and all those guys started, the whole slasher genre obviously came out the back of that boom. Yeah. But like, what was the pitch you got for Child's Play? Like, I've worked with the director before in, in, a, in, a, in another movie, and uh, he just called me up and said, do you want to do this? And, um, you know, I mean, you know, I, I had a family, so um, I was going to do... Um, that will happen occasionally, the wrestling... Yeah, they just announced the wrestling occasion. <laughs> okay, so, um, so yeah, so, um, what was I saying? You were saying you were working with the director and... Um, oh yeah, I worked with the director and... You know, um, I have family support, so unless it's a reason I don't want to do it, I do it. And there was no reason not to, so I did it. Um, did, was there any sort of, because obviously now Chucky is, his mannerisms and his voice and everything is very iconic. Was there any, nearly any other version of that voice that, that you did or anything different? I, you know, uh, it, was take, it took place in Chicago, the first, the first movie. And so I kind of made the accent Chicago, and um, but Chucky had to be Chucky couldn't be really a real person. Yeah, I didn't I didn't approach Chucky in the way I would normally approach a, a performance. I, I wanted to make him 
um, kind of generic bad guy, um, but specifically terrified of, of, of uh, oblivion, of um, the idea of suddenly not being there at all. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. Because so is, I mean, I find that a really scary thought. Yeah, it's a really, really good way of it. When did you become aware of Charles Bell? Like, if you're checking. I mean, it's been, a, it's been there, I guess I was seven when, uh, and I don't have many memories before it, so I think I was like pretty aware was the thing by the time I was in uh, middle school, high school, because boys or kids would talk about it and be like, oh, she's Chucky's kid. <laughs> uh, and that made me like a little bit cooler than I was. Uh, and my birthday is the day before Halloween, so my birthday parties were always Halloween. And he, he'll do the laugh once a year. He'll never do it for you guys. <laughs> I know you've asked, I'm sorry. But he would only do it for me once a year, and that was on my birthday. So, and it would, everybody was excited. So. I mean, it is exciting, but also a terrifying present. <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, happy birthday. I'm just gonna put chills in your smile. Yeah, yeah. It's funny though, actually, I was in Los Angeles like three days ago, and uh, we did the, there's mazes, the Universal Studio has mazes, and we went uh, in the Chucky maze, which was a big deal this year, and it felt like home, or I can't even describe it. I was trying to figure out what it felt like, but I, I was going up to these dolls, and I was like, oh! You know, he's like a knife and bloody, and I was just like, oh, it's my family, I love you. I was like, oh, Dad. Yeah, the real reason we have a couch here is because this will become terrible. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I guess it's always been it's always been there. I've always been grateful for it. It's fun, fucking weird, fun thing about it. But how, like, how did you then later on get involved in the franchise? What was the route to that? And like, what so, was that like for you to see that as well? I was like 28 or something, and I had done a season of True Blood, and a couple, um, I had just, I had been an actress for about three years, um, and done a little, uh, like a few things here and there. True Blood was probably the biggest thing I had done. And uh, they gave me a, an opportunity to audition for the older sister. I put, I was working in in some fucking state. I was in the middle of nowhere. And anyway, I did an audition. The creator, Don Mancini, who I actually didn't know but I had met before, was like, you should put yourself on tape for the lead. And then I did that, and it was immediately pretty clear that there was a big interest. It was really scary for me scarier than anything I'd ever done because nepotism is absolutely a thing. I have no doubt about it. Um, but it was really scary to try to prove myself on such a public stage with something that's so close to my identity and family. And, so, and also I, I hate everything I do anyway. <laughs> but um, I've gotten better as, it, as I got older. But it was really scary and I had no idea how popular Chucky was. Uh, I didn't get it. Um, and then after it got out, I was like, oh my god. You were just like, oh, this is my dad's laugh comes from. <laughs> well, it was, I was just, yeah, I just didn't realize that the, like, the, Chucky, the Chucky fandom is so um, yeah. dedicated. <laughs> and dad, were you just like, I told you so? <laughs> um, yeah, um, I, uh, yeah, I was just proud of it. Uh, That's lovely. I mean, I don't know when your daughter, and she did really, really well. I mean, I thought her performance was was very clear and um, very real. I believed her. Okay. Um, and there's, there's, as Don Mancini said, there's something about Fiona that makes you think that the kind of weird things that happened in the movie could really happen to her. Yeah. You, you too, Dad. <laughs> I believe your soul could go into a dog. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, we are going to let you guys ask some questions, so if you have, please get your hands up. We'll, we'll probably have to get the mic back to you, but I'll get to these guys first, and then, yeah, that'll be great. So we'll go one, two. Okay. One of my favorite uh, movies is Definitely. And I wanted to ask if you, uh, if you remember how it was on set. Did you improvise something or um, I read in the, in the 
Is that the death machine? So, um, on the set of Death Machine, yeah. um, she's a big fan, um, she read that you stayed in character for the whole of that shoot. Is that true of what your memories of Death Yeah, it's always true. That's the way I do it. I, um, I uh, you know, get involved in the character. Remember when my girlfriend was with me at the very beginning, who I'm still with, um, I was playing, uh, we went to New Orleans and I was playing this scum guy who lied through, uh, and um, I was talking on the phone after she left and she said, you know, I really don't believe a word that's coming out of your mouth right now and uh, please don't talk to me until you finish the movie. <laughs> so, yeah. Did you, did you do that with every film? Yeah. Even like when you agree with words on you were in that? Oh yeah, I did, I, um, they did, uh, one guy had no idea that I wasn't English. He thought, he said, and then when I, I was finished, you know, I didn't have to talk anymore, so I just talked like me, and he was, he went up and said, why is Brad going around with that really phony American accent? <laughs> you know, so yeah. Oh, hey, do you do the same? Probably a little less. You know, there there would be I remember when he was playing Gemini Killer, it was really creepy for like a couple months in the house. But do you remember Death Machine specifically? What what movie was that? Because nope. I feel like we did we, I'm not sure we answered your question. What which one which one was Death Machine? Yeah, she, Death Machine was done in London. Was that in London? Who what, what was it? Was it the It was a big metal chicken that chased everybody around and chewed them up. What did you uh, play? What did you play? I played the guy who invented the big metal chicken. Don't you remember? It was that time that he came home with the big metal chicken. <laughs> and I had locks. They had they put extensions in my hair. Did you, yeah, what, did you play the inventor? Were you, were you an asshole? I learned that word Total. in French. Tooth and tooth. Total asshole. You were an asshole? Absolutely. <laughs> And stated character. What? Stated character. It is. It did. It struck me. Well, you know, I had the yeah. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever played a nice character that you've stayed in character for? Yeah, I can't stay in character for those. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, there are accents, and if you have an accent, you know, it's a way of talking that isn't your way of talking. It's not going to be natural, you know, it's not going to really sound like it's really coming from you unless you do it a lot. Yeah. So my way of forcing myself to do that kind of work is to do it all the time. Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually French, but uh, just decided to be an Australian for a while. And well, you're really in a I think it works. Really doing so well. Get out of it, uh, We've got a question here. Yeah. How do you imagine your profession in the future with all the problems you have right now? Uh, I don't know if you'll, you feel free not to answer this one because of the strike and stuff, but the question was, how do you imagine your profession in the future with all the problems yeah. going on today? Can I imagine what? How do you imagine your profession in the future with all the problems going on today? Well, I don't, I, I don't know what problems you're referring to, but I... Um, um, you know, there is this AI thing, and um, I really think we have to beat it. I mean, I, I think AI has to be seriously, seriously controlled. My big worry is, when I was young, there was records, and people cared about music, and even in the way that it sounded. And you bought expensive stereo sets that were, you know, um, and people paid real money for those. And then they came out with CDs. And the CDs were terrible. The sound was all squashed down. And it was awful. But people got used to it. And now, you know, people went to the theater to see movies. And that was like a real thing. Now people are watching movies on, on phones. So we get used to crap, garbage. Things that aren't 
everything they could be, and we settle for that, and um, we forget what we lose. Thank you for coming. I just wanted uh, to know uh, how was the ambiance of the set of Miami Vice. I remember <laughs> you, you play a wonderful, fantastic uh, drug law in front of the judge. And how was it to, to work on that scene? It was uh, uh, quite serious at the time uh, for cinematic ways and chromatic ways. Yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, style over content theory of, of, um, of that's literally, literally what it was called. I mean, it, seriously, they called it that. Um, you know, it was, just, it was a scum. I was playing this scum drug dealer, you know, who, and you know, I did a lot of that. It was a sociopath, you know. I'm, I don't know why, but I have a life of doing sociopaths, so. It was just another day at the, at the, at the office. But you did learn that you're very good at, at being a drug lord in real life, so uh, I'm sure it kind of happened. Yeah, the extra income during those yeah. kids was uh, very good. After AI takes all our jobs. Yeah. Yeah. AI drug lords, you heard it here first, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we have to let you go back. To go, you guys are so busy And you've got a photo today. shoot? Yeah. You've got photo shoots and everything. But um, these guys are here for the rest of the day, so I please. Just, oh, and yeah. I just wanted to say, this has been one of the loveliest cons. I feel like um, I've just had so many great, kind of enthusiastic, cool people that are really trying to speak English well, too. Just, anyway, I've had, I've had a really good time. So I just yeah. Thank, to thank you for you your effort in yeah. terms of talking yeah. to us. <laughs> you know, because I know it's been hard to... We should speak French, we should speak Flemish, uh, but we don't. And so. also, his dad is French. I realize we're not in France, we're in Belgium, but whatever. That's it, that's all. Okay. So, all, all, now. All, all, all you need is get back to the Belgium, and you'll go method, and you'll get it trapped in, in a week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. But yeah, we're going to let him go, so you know what to do.